was a noise complaint. Oh, yeah. oh, is that you? A complaint of a oh, guy with a chainsaw destroying stuff. Toy Story. Previous case, that guy was unarmed. Right. This case, he had a knife. It's different. Right. And that's, and that's what happens in... Uh, oh, yeah, it's it's, it's, uh, whenever yeah, anyone sure. cites a case as precedent, you always try to do, you always try to distinguish it away. Saying, this is different, it's not the same, it doesn't apply, let my side prevail. Now, the question is on that one is, where was the knife at the time? It was in his hip. It was, he, so he actually was, he had it, uh, he had it. So tell me how, that's truly well, that's, different. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. yeah. In more case, the street, the right. street right. 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 and the district judge kind of blew it. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Now, the other case is much more, I think, complicated where the cops are called, the wife says, my husband's drunk and he won't leave the house. Okay, so already it's not the same thing as the, my boyfriend's destroying everything with a chainsaw. The cops show up, there he is in the garage, and he picks up a hammer. And they go, drop the hammer, drop the hammer, they have their guns out now. Drop it, drop it, and he raises the hammer, blam, 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 blam. Oh, also, wasn't he already hit, uh, or, or some, one of the cops has said, let's tase him, Let's use uh, non-lethal force. There's a discussion of tasing yeah. him, but he's the problem. Right. Raised the thing. So the Supreme Court said, well, he raised it in a way and was standing in a way that they reasonably could have believed that he was about to throw this hammer at them. So qualified immunity. That one is maybe, that one you could really chew on and discuss and disagree with the Supreme Court and say, just because a guy has a hammer over his head, that does not allow you to shoot him multiple times. So that's kind of where we are, but it's still that thing of what you talked about. The problem with qualified immunity is not the idea that cops should be suable for anything they do that you don't like. We can't have that. They should only be suable if they really have violated your, your constitutional rights. The problem with qualified immunity is the yeah. second requirement. That somebody else already had to do the heavy lifting in a previous case of establishing right. that but, what you did. So the only kinds of cases you can bring are, is where you go, Hey, judge, remember the guy, right. who, wherever the cop who did exactly this, well, this cop did the same exact thing to me. You already said that was unconstitutional, so obviously it's unconstitutional. That's too high of a bar. Right. The bar was too low, and now, now it's, too, it's high. too high. And to your point, uh, it, it, it actually gets ridiculous because it has to be so specific as to matching the two fast criteria that it really... It, it's almost impossible if they have someone done over the head 12 times with a flashlight is not the same as hitting somebody over the head six times with a billy club. This could be substantially fixed easily. Not completely fixed, but substantially. It used to be, if I sued you, and the per we would look to see if there was a prior case, and there isn't. But the judge would still rule in this case if I if I vi no if you violated my constitutional rights. That means uh, you can't be sued. Am I suing you? I forgot how I said that. You can't be sued this time. But from now on, right, right, it sets a precedent from now on. Then they said you don't have to do that anymore. All you have to do is see if there's a previous case that's sufficiently similar, and if there's not. Case dismissed and you're done. What does it mean? No more precedents are being set. So cops can do things that clearly do violate someone's rights, but no judge will rule that it did, and that means going forward, every other cop who does the same thing ends up with qualified immunity as well. I'm for the, you get one shot, collectively police people, you get one shot to violate somebody's rights without being sued. But then it's established that you did, and now any other cops who do that can be sued. And substantially the same facts, not specifically the same. Yeah, you can't do the specificity they have now. All right, thanks, Wayne. Uh, coming up, uh, shrooms uh, and startups. You ever start up a gold thing? Well, I don't think it's too safe. The psychedelic gold rush. Oh, talking about gold rush, you oh, yeah. awesome. chance to win $1,000 when we come back. Oh, boy, what a second.
medicating and finding out that sort of work. And now the science is there. Now uh, there's enough out there where there are startups. You can invest in companies that deal with psychedelics for medical purposes. I uh, can deal with anxiety, PTSD, uh, dealing with cancer, emotionally, uh, mentally. Uh, Field Trip is one of them, it's a Canadian startup, and it's building 75 centers for psychedelic therapy in the next three years. And by the way, uh, this, as far as the FDA is concerned, this has never been okay. Now, ketamine is legal if it's prescribed by a doctor, uh, but it's still a uh, Schedule One controlled substance, which, according to the DEA, has no medical value, uh, high potential for abuse, but uh, doctors can use ketamine. Ketamine is uh, known as a first tranquilizer, but it's used for in hospitals and uh, a lot of um, uh, people who, uh, for example, when I my back was, uh, it was destroyed, as you know, and I was taken to the hospital by an ambulance, and the pain was so enormous, they actually shot me up with ketamine. They had ketamine in the ambulance with a pain shot. So it can be used off-brand. And now uh, you have these companies saying, wait a minute, there's enough future here that you can literally invest and start up these companies that are in the future going to deal with psychedelics, uh, dispense psychode uh, psychedelics to treat people. I believe in it completely. I truly do. Now, right now, you can undergo ketamine uh, programs right here in Southern California. It's a, it's a tiny, uh, they're, uh, of course, controlled by doctors. They're overseen by doctors, medical doctors. And uh, you take minute doses four to six times, and it deals with sleeplessness, for example, anxiety, uh, people who suffer from nightmares, and all kinds of mental issues. So the future of psychedelic therapy is maybe uncertain, but I think it is absolutely here. And if why is that I don't know. You know, something I, I really have to think about. But uh, yeah, here I am saying, gee, that looks good to me, but I don't know if I'm going to do it. I remember when Bitcoin first came out. And you could literally buy Bitcoin were fractions of a cent. Literally, you could buy several Bitcoin for a penny. And today, it's 60000 bucks per. So, go figure. I think the same thing is going to happen with the psychedelic centers. And it's coming. And I'm not going to go into my memories because I think it's one of those things that uh, doesn't particularly uh, bring back the evidence. All right, we're out of here with this. Uh, I have to be a little careful with that one. Oh, uh, so here's one uh, on the internet with King Girl. An internet story that when I read it, I'm going to come on, this is the truth. It is. It is. And then coming up at 9.50, another internet story. And this one uh, is the last place you will think where this kind of language and posts and chats for me. This is Say a Hi, Ian, for Sporty. Let's check in with Jenner. Well, this year has been the second driest in state history. A report by the California Department of Water Resources says rising temperatures and a lack of rainfall contributed to the dry year, and conditions are not expected to get better anytime soon. The driest year recorded in California was 1924. Vice President Harris has got the right need to talk about climate change and President Biden's infrastructure plan. The water level at Lake Mead has jumped over 150 feet over the past 20 years, and is expected to drop even more by January. Just a couple of months ago, U.S. officials declared the first ever water shortage at the Colorado River, which feeds Lake Mead and provides water to millions of people. News is brought to you by Pure Again Water. The LA City Council is expected to consider expanding the Skid Row, Skid Row Clean Team into a citywide program. The team is made up of homeless or formerly homeless people who have been working to stop bulky trash and other debris from building up in Skid Row. Council and Mitchell Barrow said the model is working well for people who are living there. The council will look at expanding it.
Frozen two. Super shy.
Disney. Angel, angel, angel. Angel, angel, angel. Your dress, a dress. Dizzy Frozen. Yes. 
Never mind. Yeah. Celebration travels to the lifetime. Celebration travels to the lifetime. Okay, it's one, twice, 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 So hot.
Why am I in this mess? Disney Brothers. 